You have played your opening perfectly. You developed your pieces, controlled the center, and castled your king. And now, now what? If you have been playing chess for quite some time now, you have probably asked yourself this question. After you finish the opening, what do I do next? How do I attack my opponent? The middle game drama is an issue for most chess players and we are no exceptions. We always have this struggle about what to do after we finish the opening stage of the game. But today I'm going to give you guys some general strategy that you can use in any position to always know what to do in the middle game. But before we begin, I'd like to ask you to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more. Now let's take a look at this position here. We have a very typical scotch game position, e4, e5, opponents are going to uh, develop their pieces very easily here, and after the opponent takes the central knight, we take with the queen, opponents is going to keep developing the pieces, we develop the pieces normally. We're going to be playing a normal game of chess, developing our pieces naturally, just like we know what to do in the opening stage of the game. We castle our king, opponent castle, and after king b1, bishop to e6, f3 and a6, we reached a middle game position. All our pieces are developed and now we have to start attacking our opponent. And that's exactly when we ask the question, what to do next? So I'm going to give you some interesting ideas to use in every game you play. The first one you're going to look at, the first tip is identify a strong piece in your opponent's position and try to exchange that piece for a weak piece that you have. So identify this very strong piece. And here I instantly see this light square bishop that is staring at our king side. So we have this very passive bishop here that is still not developed yet. And we can go ahead and make this move, for example, trying to trade this very bad bishop. This is our bad bishop because it's the same color of our pawn chain. And this is at their strong bishop because it's a different color from their pawn chain. So we're going to trade this very passive bishop, very weak, for this strong piece in the black's position. This is going to help us to find our next move. And if the opponent tries to make some different move, for example, moving the knight here, we can go ahead and trade ourselves. So here, the opponent is going to trade the bishop and we capture back with the queen. Okay, so we are identifying a strong piece and trading it for a weaker piece that we have. This is the first tip that I'm going to give you. After the opponent attacks our queen with b5, we should ask ourselves other question. And this is gonna be the tip number two that you guys can go for in the middle game, and that is identifying holes in your opponent's positions. And these holes and weak squares are squares that your opponent cannot defend with pawns anymore because these pawns were moved this pawn was moved and this pawn was moved, so this square right here cannot be defended by any pawns anymore. So we can go ahead and stick one of our pieces over there. In this case, we're going to move the queen and we can find easily this move if we look for weak squares in our opponent's position. So this is a great position for us to put our queen. This is rule number two that you guys can follow in any middle game. Of course, after the opponent pushes the pawn even further to b4, we can go for the third tip. And the third tip is we should look for outposts, especially for our knights. And outposts are squares that are defended by our pawns and it's difficult for our opponent to kick our pieces from there. So if we put this knight here in this very nice square here, uh, it's very difficult because this pawn does yeah, does not exist anymore, is no longer here to protect this square, and this pawn cannot be pushed very easily. So this is a very good outpost to put our knight there, so knight to d5, and our opponent will have to make a concession to get rid of this very strong piece. This is why our opponent is going to think as well, wow, this knight is a very strong piece, I might as well go ahead and trade my weaker knight for this very strong centralized knight in the outpost. So here, this is rule number three, we are looking for outposts to put our pieces, especially knights. Opponent's probably going to eliminate that very strong knight that we have. We're going to take it back, in this case with the rook, activating our rook as well. And uh, after bishop to f5, f6, sorry, we're going to think about another rule. This is going to be number four now. 
If you are ahead in development or if you have the initiative, just like in this case, we have more active pieces, more developed pieces, and we have the initiative, we are attacking in this position, we have to open up the position. So number four is if you if you are more active, if you have a lead in development, try to open up the position. And a very good way to do that is looking for pawn breaks or a way to advance our pawns and attack our opponent pawns, provoking open lines. So in this case here, this move e5 comes with a little bit of poison because our opponent cannot take this pawn due to this pin. Otherwise, they're going to lose the queen. So they have to move this bishop away. This is the only way for them to have a decent position here. So they're going to play bishop to e7. And no matter what they do, we're going to open up the position and make this position wide open because we have more pieces and more active pieces. This is going to be good for us. We're going to have open lines to attack with those pieces. So here we're going to take the pawn after they recapture. We are going to take the pawn again. After uh, black recaptures, we take with the rook, attacking the queen, and the queen is going to move away. So in a position like this, we have many things that can uh, we can do here. But another rule, and this is number five, the last rule that we're going to learn here today is look for a sad piece and try to make that piece happier. Okay, so look for a piece that is not very active, that is not playing yet, is not involved in the game, and try to make that piece a part of your attack. Try to make that sad piece happy again. Try to make your piece that is not active more active. And we can take a look at this rook that is very sad in the corner, and we can try to make it happier. And rooks usually go well in open files, so we can try to bring it here or here. It's a really nice way to bring it here because we're going to double up, preparing nasty attacks here. So rook h to d1 is a great move, activating our last piece, making our sad piece happier and more active. Of course, our opponent cannot go for this capture. It looks like this pawn is hanging, but after the opponent takes this pawn, we actually have this very interesting move right here. And the opponent is actually losing in this position because um, this is simply a checkmate here from here on. If the opponent tries to take the piece here, for example, if they go for this capture, they're actually losing because we have the back rank checkmate. Okay, and there is nothing that our opponent can do here. Okay, so you can see the engine is accusing checkmate in one. So in this case, after this move, they have to, uh, after this move, they have to go for the rook. We're going to take the pawn in the corner. They take the rook, we capture back. Now they can take the pawn on g2 and we take the other pawn on b4. After rook takes the pawn, we defend our rook here that was under attack and we are in an end game now. We are in an end game. We have just a few pieces and pawns on the board and we are in this end game up a pawn. This is probably a very drawish end game. We are up a pawn, but it's difficult. It's still a very difficult position, but we managed to get through the middle game with a small advantage. That's what we should be looking for. So pay attention to all these rules that I gave you guys in this video. These rules are going to be very, very useful for you in your middle games, in any position this is applicable. But Always remember that the best way to study middle games is studying your opening in a database. You should look for the opening you play, put it in a database with master and grandmaster level games so you can check what the masters and grandmaster usually do when they reach that position. So you can see more or less what plans they go for, what kinds of moves they go for. And this way, it's much easier for you to come up with a plan. So generic ideas, general ideas are these ones that I presented in this video, but you can also look for typical plans for uh, the opening you usually play. Okay, so that's it for this video, guys. I hope you all liked the video. If you liked the video, remember to leave a like and a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and as always, I see you guys in the next video.